This is All Things 80s with Garrett, and I'm Garrett. Welcome to another episode of Maximum Overdrive, Filming Location, Episode 2. Uh, this is the continuation of the 35th anniversary of the movie. Uh, this has been a really fun movie to uh, not only do the videos for, but also to like visit the locations and find some of these locations that um, that weren't in, that weren't known or weren't known to everybody. Uh, some of the hardcore fans probably know where some of these things were, but if uh, you're just a general fan and you just wanted to know where the filming locations are, hopefully you're hopefully you enjoyed this uh, video, and we're gonna get right to it. All right, stop. Let's back this up. I was about ready to show you the Shirley Road location here with Deke on his bicycle after he where he encounters the mighty tasty ice cream truck. Uh, and this is after he leaves the Prentice Street location. And I don't think I gave you that name on the last video, but it's Prentice Street. It's the 1900 block. Uh, he's going down 1900 block uh, toward the National Cemetery. If you want to know where that exact location uh, was, and I'm sorry I didn't put that in the last video. But this is supposed to be uh, continuing on after that scene. And it comes right down here to... Uh, to the block of Kenwood and Shirley, and this is where we see Deke on the bicycle, and, uh, and then we see the uh, see the ice cream truck. But before we get to that, and I'm about ready to show you that, but I did not cover the the sprinkler scene right before the Princess Street scene, and I thought it was right here close to Shirley Road, and uh, but I was looking. And when I was doing this scene, I really noticed it that this is exactly it's on this right behind what we're seeing here. This is where the the sprinkler scene was prior to the Princess Street scene. And uh, if you look behind them, you see there's two two shots here. One, uh, I don't know what kind of tree this is to the left, but it's got a pink bloom to it. Uh, I don't know if that's a Zay or what. I'm not exactly sure, but I don't think it is. But whatever it is, it's you can see it in the background on the sprinkler and you can also see it in the background when he comes uh, off this little end of the road um, and he comes down to the intersection there of Shirley and uh, Kenwood. And then we also see in this next shot, you also see the back to the, there's a, there's a bush and there's a lamp post to, uh, to the, to the left of him, to the right, to the right of what we're seeing on the screen. And we see that there behind him. And so this matches up perfectly. I thought it may have been on Kenwood, and I looked down that street trying to trying to line up the line up the, the telephone poles and also line up the sidewalk, but it is actually it is on the 2400 block of Shirley Road, and that's where the sprinkler scene was prior to the Princess Street scene. And now we're back to the Shirley Road scene, and now we're back. So now let's continue and let's go forward. So here we are in Leland, North Carolina on Lanville Road. Uh, we're with Kurt, Kurt and Connie going toward the Kicking Mule. And on the right-hand side, there's these two utility poles that you see in the movies. They pass by, and they're still here, and there's still a bunch of old cars in front. So I'm going to go check to see if any of these old cars are still the same. It's a little bit better view, but this is you see these two poles to the right when they go by, and this is where 
there's uh, like three vehicles with the hoods up and the after they pass by the light the headlights flash on so you can tell that something's going on with this comet and uh, how it's affecting vehicles and machinery all right you see um, Connie and Curtis they're coming over here and they stop right here and um, you see these signs right here and but they go over here to the kicking mule to get gas and this is where um, they get out and there's obviously there's no more pumps here at the time but behind this thing I think this is where um, the guy was laying there dead so I'm standing outside of the famous line of where um, truck comes at him and he has to dodge and it crashes the truck crashes in about right there and uh, this is where Connie's over here Yearly Smith and she's like Curtis are you are you dead he gets up and comes over gives her a kiss but this is the this is the spot um, just kind of it's cool there's a truck I hear the same time I'm doing this filming but there was a building across the street this was behind them you could see it um, from both angles from over here from this is where Yearly Smith was um, talking and there's a house on the corner and this house has just recently been torn down because on Google Maps you could see it uh, in recent in recent pictures so it's, it hasn't been long that the house has been gone but it was here you could see it from this is about where Curtis was standing when He's calling for help and he's like, he's like, that's about where the truck was actually when he calls for help. He goes, help, over here, over here. And this sort of the angle of the truck would have came right at him. Would have been right, right here. So all of a sudden the truck comes back to life and uh, Curtis and Connie take off driving out and swing out this way and the car fishtails this way and they go this way and they go right and then it's turning because not not this way and they go back left uh, they're going back to 74 76 but they uh, they're gonna end up over on 40 as we, and it's about 33 miles from here and that is where uh, they get the truck attacks them and we're gonna go take a look at that uh, but it's funny funny this is this is really only about two miles away from the Dixie boy location uh, but before they make it to the Dixie Boy, they film 33 miles away. Uh, it's it's kind of neat how uh, movie magic happens. I love, I love how they do that sometimes. But we're literally like two miles away from the Dixie Boy location from here uh, to Kicking Mule. But, but they end up filming the in-between scene um, 33 miles away from here. And then they end up where the, the, the sign says two miles away from the Dixie Boy. And then they end up at the Dixie Boy um, location. But we're gonna take it. We're gonna take a look at that now. All right. So we're at this second location here for. Oh, this is this truck. Looks like the truck that actually that actually rams Curtis and Connie's thing off. But I'm here to talk about. This is where Curtis and Connie uh, come up off their chase down 40. Actually, um, right after the gas station, and uh, they come up this exit ramp. So he cuts across and he cuts cuts across, cuts back this way. The truck goes over. There was no trees at the time, and I'll show it in the video, but there's no trees at the time, and the truck explodes going down this embankment right here. None of these trees were here. And it, this little car comes this way, and it stops. And the Dixie Boy sign would have been about right there. They would have looked over and saw explosion, and you could see actually see the exit 398 sign in the background. I went to school here at UNCW in, in down in Wilmington, and I've driven now 40 back and forth between Durham and Wilmington. I never knew that right off of exit 398 that this is this is where um, a little bit of movie history was filmed. Pretty cool. No, we can call the police from that truck stop up there.
like we're at the end of uh, Maximum Overdrive, and the guys they would have uh, they were after Dixie, after the Dixie exploded, they made their way to this diner, and you would have seen him coming from the right. They would have went, they would have said diner on the outside, same sign. They would have went behind the building, and it ended up over here by this fence. But if you look at here, this the same. It's the same sign. And uh, there's two windows. Of course, there's some construction going on, but it's the same, same, same structure. Two windows, the door at the front. It's the same sign on that. It's had diner, had diner on the very front of the uh, the roof here. And there was this like a little pylon, little tiny little fence, maybe about a foot high, going around. And it was here in some earlier Google pictures, uh, Google photo pictures. There was, there was, it was still there. But there, it's become, it's gonna become a Zappa pizzeria. So that's what's coming. So I'm glad I was able to get here and get the, some pictures of this. But from here, this is where. After this, this is where Zeke. That's where the Burger Lane sign would have been. The burger on the main side would have been about right there. He would have shot it, and then Kurt Curtis would have came out, and that, this is shot right here. And this is where the ice cream truck that we saw back chasing um, chasing Deke earlier in the in the movie. And then they shot a kind of automatic assault rifle at it and blew it up uh, right there in this angle right here. So this is the, this is where they came in uh, from behind the diner in the Burger Lane restaurant and they were up against this fence and probably about right here because there's a there's a little drop off in the fence there and there's another one right there. They were kind of all about right there lined up. And this is when the Burger Lane sign, which would have been, you see here, it's not very wide. After the ice cream truck blew up, the group would have went across Carolina Beach Road and went to the Carolina Inlet Marina, which is about three miles away from the burger place. So the Carolina Inlet Marina is actually the Inlet Watch Yacht Club. Uh, it's in the Seabreeze community, which is in Wilmington. Uh, this whole area around the marina has grown up. Uh, these houses are over $500,000 and above, and there's a, a lot of development since 1985. So this has been about the angle about where the boat would have been, looking into the, um, to the marina here, this corner, this angle right here. Brad would have. This row of boats here would have been would have been here. There was a row of boats, but it was I think one one over. You can see through it. But this is where the lady yeah, was hanging out of the um, her, hanging out of the car with her diamond, and Brad goes over, takes the diamond off her hand, turns around, doesn't see the Green Goblin coming at him. And the Green Goblin uh, just comes and rams him right here, and this is where uh, this re blows the Green Goblin. Up right here and then they and he runs back they get on the boat and they take off out before we go I want to thank a few people and you can always check my video description I'm gonna try to include links to people when I can but I give thanks to my friend Matt for the drone footage in both episodes of Maximum Overdrive I want to thank you Tugel for the VHS uh, animation and sound effect. I want to thank uh, Andrew from Canada. I don't know Andrew's last name, but he helped with the location of finding the Burger Lean and the Marina locations. I also want to thank Ash Freeman uh, for the guitar cover uh, that's used during the Marina scene. And I want to thank uh, Nick for Fast Rewind. That's where I go for help find all my 80s stuff, but definitely film locations. Uh, that's where I found some some other film locations for uh, for Maximum Overdrive. I found a few on my own, but definitely it's my go-to for any 80s movies. And then also want to thank my friend Chris from the Midnight Movie Snap Podcast. Chris was with me 
for a lot of these locations. These, uh, and we did a 35th anniversary podcast. Uh, check it out, and there will be a video as soon as my video is over with. I got a little teaser that will be right after my exit, uh, my last part of the video. And check it out, just a little teaser for the podcast. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, I hope you like this video. Hit like if you do, hit subscribe, and leave some comments below for me. And I'll see you on the next episode of All Things Aids with Gary. Hi. My name is Stephen King. I've written several motion pictures, but I want to tell you about a movie called Maximum Overdrive. Wow. What in the dick is going on around here? A lot of people have directed Stephen King novels and stories, and I finally decided if you want something done right, you ought to do it yourself. It was my first picture as a director, and you know something? I sort of enjoyed it. I just wanted someone to do Stephen King right. I just want to get the hell out of here. So come and spend some time with me and my friends at the Dixie Boy. Spend some time in the dark. Please don't let me in the dark. Help me. I'm going to scare the hell out of you. Maximum Terror. <laughs> Maximum King. Dino De Laurentiis presents Stephen King's Maximum Overdrive.